Hey guys, so I just bought a new 3D printer, the Anycubic Mega S. I have an upcoming project that requires a lot of printing. Also, that video will be coming in the next eh, six months to a year maybe, depending on if I'm successful. So maybe stay tuned or maybe not, but we'll see. Anyways, I currently own a PrinterBot Play 3D printer, but really it's just a paperweight at this point. Uh, the company went out of business and there was an issue with their hot ends, at least earlier on. And while there are aftermarket parts for it, they're pretty pricey, but I'll come back to that point in a bit. This video is going to be a quick review of this printer. So far, I've owned it for about three weeks and I have printed about five pounds of filament through it. And you know, the short of it is I love this printer. This thing is awesome. Uh, my buddy actually owns two of these printers and it was on his recommendation that I bought this as well. The other printer that I was contemplating was also the, uh, was the Ender Free or 5. But the main reasons why I went with this printer is basically for the price you're getting an amazing value. I picked this up for 350 Canadian dollars. Uh, in US dollars that's about 260 bucks. The printer has a heated print bed, uh, a filament runout sensor, and an upgraded extruder over the Anycubic i3 Mega, which is also very similar. And I was hard pressed to find the exact differences until I really looked it up, which this is the Mega S. And as I mentioned, the other version that you might come across when you do a search for the uh, Anycubic printers, 3D printers is the i3 Mega. So it's got a build volume of 210 by 210 by 205 millimeters. It's got a Bowden drive and geared feeder to feed the filament into the, into the printer uh, with a single extruder that tops out at a max temperature of 275 degrees Celsius and a max heated bed temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. So good for printing some of those uh, filaments that uh, need higher temperatures. The frame is well, all metal frame. It has a detachable filament holder and an SD card slot built in. The touchscreen LCD monitor also is awesome. So this here works really well and you can also monitor temperature and status. Whereas my printer bot play, I couldn't do that. But most printers do come with a, a display of some sort now. Um, 3D printing has come a long way since I bought that other printer. But yeah, that LCD panel is basic, but it works well. And with that touchscreen, it's really nice to be able to adjust some settings right on the printer without having to go into the software. So 3D printers are finicky in my experience. And what I like about this printer is that it came pre-assembled basically, uh, almost ready to go. All you need to do is just bolt on this main frame, this main arm system here. This base comes all assembled, including the print bed. You just need to bolt this main, you know, arm thing and also the um, print spool holder. And you can be up and running in less than 15 minutes. Also, the printer comes with some real basic tools like hex keys, tweezers, cutoff pliers, a scraper, and extra nozzles. Oh, and also, it came with a whole extra hot end. Like, that's crazy good but the warranty is one year on the unit except for the hot end. So maybe that's why they included an extra hot end because that's probably the part that's gonna be most likely to wear out. So the bed leveling is something really worth mentioning on this printer. It's so easy. There are adjustment screws on the heated print bed and you slide a piece of paper between the nozzle and the bed and adjust until there is some resistance uh, or until whatever height that you want. Uh, really very easy and adjustable. Uh, I do like this type of system for leveling the print bed. There is an auto resume function too in case of power failure, but I haven't had to yet test that, so I don't know how well that would work. Now onto the heated print surface. It has an interesting texture. It's kind of, uh, I don't know, it's a little coarse. And what I really like about this print surface is that the prints really stick to it when it's hot, but once it cools down, the prints pop right off, at least for PLA. So no more painter's tape or Kapton tape. Uh, the other thing I should mention that it is a glass print bed and it has that textured surface on top of it. Uh, the reason why I have this printer off while I'm doing this review and while I'm speaking is because the fans are loud. 
But since I really keep this in the either in the garage or in the basement, I'm not too worried about the uh, sounds of the fans. But there are upgrade kits or uh, upgrade fans that you can get for them, and I might look into those in the future. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about working on this printer. I've tried swapping out the hot end on this printer and printing with different size nozzles, and I can say that this printer is really easy to work on in my opinion. I did make one modification to the printer. I didn't quite like the filament holder, and it was a little bit too small, so I fabricated my own from a piece of stainless that uh, I had left laying around, and I just attached it. Uh, but you know, you can probably print off a, a new arm or get an external um, print holder as well. The next inexpensive upgrade that I will do is probably replace this white Bowden tube with a more precise one. Um, and also I should mention on this printer that when I received it, I did do a few prints on it and I found it was under extruding. So make sure to do an extruder calibration as mine was off by as much as 20%. And I was getting gaps in a lot of my prints. A minor thing, very easy to fix. Just look up how to uh, fix uh, under extrusion and all kinds of stuff will come up. Now, I want to mention a few things about support for this printer. I like that parts are available online for them. And for example, to purchase a new hot end uh, is like under 20 bucks. Whereas the PrinterBot Play hot end, it's like 80 bucks after shipping, um, conversion, shipped into Canada. So, you know, parts for this are readily available from what, you know, for now anyway. So that's a big, you know, in my opinion, support is a big plus. Also, I've emailed the company and when I had some questions about the printer and they were super fast in getting back to me. And my buddy had very similar experience with customer support as well. Uh, the community support is also very good for this printer and I see that there are tons of YouTube videos on this printer and including ones from the vendor um, Anycubic as well. So those videos seem okay for setting up the printer and troubleshooting and just the various other videos that they have posted related to 3D printing. Okay, and lastly, while not part of the review, for this printer, I highly recommend getting a Raspberry Pi and loading OctoPrint on it to control and monitor your prints from a PC or a phone. I love being able to sit at my desk and or on the couch while I'm watching TV to make sure my prints are going smoothly or I can send files directly to the printer from my, uh, or I should be able, should I say, send files from my phone or laptop or computer directly to the Raspberry Pi over the network. So if you haven't heard of OctoPrint, definitely Google it and check it out. So this is my Raspberry Pi here. I got a case for it. And then instead of plugging, the, plugging my computer directly into the printer, I plug this into it. And this does all the controls for it. So it's really nice not having to have my computer hooked up to it. All right, lastly, at the end of the video, I'll show some example test prints. So I'll pen those on at the end. So. That's my quick and dirty review. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it useful and consider subscribing to my channel for all kinds of different content from 3D printing, surfing, metalworking, food, all kinds of stuff. So thanks and I will see you guys in the next video.